Okay, this is the Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners regular meeting agenda for Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. It is now 11.14 a.m. We're in the Golden Court Community Room in Hadley, Massachusetts. Topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Uh, so first of all, I was just notified on Friday afternoon after the agenda for this meeting was posted that our new commissioner, Crystal Jackson is duly sworn in, so let's extend a warm welcome to Commissioner Crystal Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, Madam Chair? Yes? Yeah. Pam, do you have the, um, the uh, admin fees? I from do. The yeah, I will get them so and pass the, them out. The housing authority has two items that we became aware of on uh, Friday. Okay, so I will add those to the executive director report, correct? Yeah, under uh, e capital, please. Under capital? Just a second, gotta get a pen. All right. Um, so I, I was just getting ready to say it. So it's two items. One is admin fee, right? Yeah. And what's the other one? There's two admin fees. Oh, two admin fees. Different projects. Okay. So the uh, number two under E, we're going to add a question about CPA application. So just, that'll take two seconds probably. So. I'm just going to ask about it for the door project. Sorry, I don't want to get into it right now, but just to ask, are we going to do it for August 1st or? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, another change for the minutes is uh, we're going to table both sets of minutes under approval of the minutes until the next meeting because there's some problems with it. They're 10 pages long, and we need to get through today pretty quickly. Um, can, I, can I ask, um, so I, I believe there are grammar issues that we can... It, 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 there, there's a, several issues, so can we just... We'll, we'll deal with that later, but... I think I would like to table the minutes. Does anyone have an objection? Okay. Is there a reason, Pamela, we should not table these minutes? Well, there, there are, they are transcripts, and um, there are two meetings behind on them. The fourth, they're from the 4th and the 12th. Um, but we, we don't even have minutes from the 12th in the packet. The 4th? Yeah. We have the fourth. We don't have minutes from the twelfth. Okay. Um, hold on. There's a couple of changes here. Uh, on H, Executive Director for H, the status of the common area policy revision to sign. Just, just something on the status, and then on. Four board correspondents will put in a little piece about the housing form. If that's okay, Pamela, we could both give a little piece about that. No, I don't. So unfortunately, I think a lot of these are don't fall under that category of not recently recently anticipated. So a lot of this you can cover under commissioner's discussion. Okay, we'll can, put that around the commissioner. Questions. You're right. Uh, we'll put around housing form. Okay, status of common area policy will put under commissioner's discussion. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. Well, look, you do have the flower bed policy on there, so at that point we can talk about it. Uh, yeah, well, no, that's items for future agenda, unless you want to go into some detail now. But it's still under commissioner's discussion. Yeah. That's where you have an open discussion. So it's, yeah. it actually doesn't really just, not every item would necessarily be on the agenda. 
Okay, not great. Voting, you're not deliberating. Right. Uh, the question. Okay, great. And uh, just to reaffirm the date of the annual plan, and I put that under commissioner's discussion. Okay, so just to reaffirm that for the board. Okay, so uh, we're tabling the minutes until the next meeting. So now we're ready for the executive director's report. So warrant report. Yeah. I got it. All right, warrant report and with invoices. Transactions between 5224 and 5224. The amount of Seven thousand one hundred forty-five dollars and forty-nine cents. What's the name? Just the last one there. Uh, five two twenty twenty-four. Right. Right. Five two twenty twenty-four. It's the first one in. First one in your packet. It is two pages long. Yeah. Put this one here in the back. Five two two. Okay. Then if you look at the next page, it's a half sheet. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so. Down at the bottom. Okay, so it comes in the second half of. Oh no, good. You've got you've got single page printout. So page eleven or twelve should be you know about twelve pages in. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Alright. You want the mount again? Yeah. Or do you want to take the vote? Or is everybody well, we're going to have to make a motion, so. I'll make the motion to approve the warrant for 5224. The 52224 in the amount of $11,145.49. Right. Do I get a second? Second. Madam Chair, then I would like to ask a question. Okay. We've had a first. A motion and a second. Now I'll open it up for discussion. Sue, would you like to ask a question? Yes, on page one on 5 2 2024 and 5 2 2024, when you go down to College Street Motors, there's a charge for a $78.70. Because of the fact that in the past we have split the cost of repairs between the Amherst Housing. Do Can we you always, hear her, Pamela? Are we splitting? In, in, in other past meetings, when there's been a repair or oil change, have the housing is paying a percentage of it in Amherst housing? Is this $78 strictly being taken out of uh, the housing monies? Because I remember a major repair where we ended up paying for half of the repair. And even though it was a truck, you know, it was 50% Amherst housing, 50% would the, are these fees now for repairs going to be 100% paid by the Housing Authority? Pamela? So, so that will, any, any adjustments will go back through the, the management agreement invoice monthly. So that's where you would see any bill back between the two agencies. Thank you, Pamela. You're welcome. Does that answer your question? When will we? other words, it, does that answer me that yes, we're splitting costs of repairs between the two, or no, we're not? It's, it's not a it's not a uh, direct split. So we are working with our our um, income right now because there is no mileage back and forth between the two. We haven't been charging them. When our when our trucks come to Hadley, or when the Hadley truck goes somewhere else, we're not we haven't been charging them. But we are working with um, our technology and uh, updating our technology and Gary to Pace to get the right formula. Thank you, Pamela. So uh, during discussion, after the motions are taken, Crystal, we start at the left, go to the right, and everyone gets the opportunity to ask questions. So do you have any questions or comments on this specific warrant report? Not at the right now. Okay. So my, my question, in line with what uh, Pamela is saying, is that, Pamela, are you still there? I am. Okay. Is, I do recall that, that uh, Am, uh, under, we haven't been, or Amherst Housing Authority has not been charging Hadley mileage for use of Amherst or Belchertown vehicles. 
And I'm concerned, I want Amherst Housing to feel like they're getting a fair uh, fulfillment of the contract. Because I think it, it could cause problems if all parties involved are not getting a full, uh, fulfillment of the contract. So I'm uh, very glad that you are working with Gary DePace and, and the management agreement, et cetera, et cetera, to make everything be more fair. And I, I have to say, Sue, I do not remember this split. Did splits happen before? Yes. When they did they, first. they did not. When John was here. And no, was they there. did not. So, they did. <laughs> well, they did not. I think that probably that was a misinterpretation because right there, Pamela Rogers, our executive director, who knows where every penny is at all times and what's being paid out, she says, no, we did not split the cost of oil change. I didn't say oil changes, it repairs. I mean, in general, so, repairs or anything to do with maintaining the vehicle. So the Ford F-350 is Hadley's vehicle, correct? Right. So Hadley would pay for Hadley's vehicle. Because we are already getting great benefit from the use of Amherst and Belchertown vehicles, correct? That's correct. Yeah. All right, I'm done. Rich, do you have anything to say? Do you get another opportunity? Nothing more to say. I have nothing. All right. So uh, call for the vote. So we're going to do a roll call vote because we've got partial videos. Sue Oppenheimer? Yes. Crystal? Yes. Risa says yes. Rich? Four to zero. Okay, the next warrant report, Rich. Uh, warrant report from 516, 24 to 516.24 from the amount of, let's see here, 30,899.50. Can I get a motion? I'll make the motion to approve. Okay, so that would be an approval. Uh, the warrant report for 516-2024 to 516-2024 in the amount of $30,899.15. Eight, $30, uh, can I get a second? Crystal seconds. Discussion? Sue? No discussion. I have nothing. Rich. Call for the vote. Uh, roll call vote. Sue Oppenheimer? Yeah, yes. Crystal Jackson? Risa Smith Fried, yeah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Risa Smith Fried, yes. Which, which is, yes. Pass four to zero. Uh, the next item is warrant report. Um, yeah. Warrant report of 51724 to 51724 for the amount of $100 Yes, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion. Good job. Okay, so the motion is for um, warrant report of 517-2024 to 517-2024 in the amount of $2,100.00. Discussion? Art, right, can I get a second? Crystal Jackson seconds. Discussion, suit. So we, we already passed the 516. We're on 517 now, right? Yes. Okay. I wanted to, can we go back? I wanted to say no. something that I can. No. No, we're done. We voted on it. It's over. Right. I had notes for myself. I just missed it. Uh, we're, we're on pages. May 17th. Yes. Warrant report. Do you have nothing? Anything? Discussion? Crystal? I have nothing, Rich. Nothing, Go around again. Thought of anything else? Crystal? Me? Nothing? Rich? Nothing? All right. Call for the vote. Roll call. Sue? Yes. Crystal? Risa? Yes. Yes. Rich is yes. So it's 4 to 0. Okay. Now we're at Treasurer's Report. No. 
Rich, would you like them? Oh my lord, okay. Rich will present. There you go. More report with invoices between transactions between 530, 24, and 530, 24. Give me a moment. Take one second. Four thousand nineteen dollars and ninety-six cents. Eighty-six. Eighty-six. Okay. Yeah. You know, it has to. So can I get a motion for? I'll make the motion we accept. And that would be for a warrant report for transactions between 5-30-2024 and 5-30-2024 in the amount of four thousand nineteen dollars and eighty-six cents. Uh, can I get a second? Crystal Jackson seconds. Discussion. Sue. No discussion. I have no discussion. Rich has no discussion. And I'm looking and no one else seems to have any questions. So we'll move on. Call for the vote. Roll call. Sue? Yes. Crystal? Risa is yes. Rich? Yes. Pass four to zero. Now Treasurer's report. Mr. Treasurer. No, and this does not, we'll have discussion, but no vote. That's it. Well, what you usually say is, have, has everybody read the treasurer's report? And you just said it. I just said it for you. Yeah, so just say that. So I'll start with Sue. Do you have any questions about the treasurer's report of May 31st? No, I don't. Crystal? Risa has no questions. Rich, do you have any questions? No? No, no questions. Okay, I'll look around. No one, no discussion needed. So we shall move on to page two, which is monthly income and expense. Anything to present, Mr. Treasurer? All right, um, everyone has reviewed this. So, Sue, any questions? No. no questions. Crystal? No. I have no questions, Rich. No questions. It does not require a vote. So, we are to. There's the moderate. Is there anything we need to review in the modernization balance? The whole modernization of 610-2024? Okay, it actually might be a good time to point out that I met with our new um, facilities management specialist in, uh, at the EOHLC about the modernization projects and of what's happening. And uh, we do have a new uh, project manager, which is wonderful. It was something that we had campaigned for. So we now have a candidate, uh, Sullivan, or uh, Ashley O'Sullivan. Um, each year when we get the, those awards and um, we make a five-year plan, then we're supposed to get uh, contracts for financial assistance, CFAs. And after we found that we had not gotten the last two years of contract um, CFAs issued to us from uh, EOHOC, and that wasn't, it, it, it's, a, it's a technicality, um, and she's working to connect, uh, correct that, so I will have those for the next board meeting. But what, what happened is that if one of our projects was left funded in the camp of and people we've been trying to get to the bottom of this for quite a while by, by some of our projects are being held up and we figured it out that there was a glitch in getting us the contracts for the board to sign. Um, so hopefully that'll that will take so long for her going forward. Thank you so much. Um, can I go to questions about that? Because I imagine there might be some, maybe. Sue, do you have any questions? No questions. Crystal? I have no questions. Rich, no questions. Anything more, Pamela, on this? 
Let me get a little dough. Okay. That, that's not, but it doesn't matter because it worked right in there with the capital report modernization. It just worked, well, it was part of the treasury part because of the, the statement for the modernization funding comes under treasurer's report. Later on, we were going to address the capital report, which might have, this might have fit into that, what you just said, but it's just as easily under that modernization piece, which is capital, you know? So uh, the other thing we were going to, uh, let's see, no, that's not, okay. So we're okay. So I don't think there's anything more for under modernization for the treasury report. So that would put us down a unit vacancy. Do you want to deliver that or would you like Sue to? No, I can, I can do that. Um, okay. Sue, yeah. No, uh, okay, we uh, in Golden Court, we have, uh, Four vacancies. Uh, all four of those are actually capital projects. The Golden Court, the two of them that are under, um, it's called the force account. So the, the um, it's partially being completed by the Inward Housing Authority staff and outside contractors. Uh, they did get new um, cabinets this week to the unit. Uh, so those, and, and we have people in line to those units. So those should be filled by the next board meeting, two of them. The other two holding board uh, vacancies and the two vacancies that work away are major capital improvement projects uh, with the vacant unit turnover money. Um, and one of the new holdings that were um, uh, concessions from the EOHLC is that when a, product, when a vacancy is tied to of the capital project, they're going to no longer count it as a, as a vacancy. Okay. Because it's out of it's out of our control, the housing authority filling it or even repairing it at that mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Um, so, but we're we're moving right along. Um, I do anticipate we have one other vacancy coming up at Golden Court, but right now we're um, we're we'll, we will end up by the next. And, uh, uh, oh, okay, so I shouldn't break the tradition here. Sue, do you have any questions about the unit vacancy report? No, I don't. That's uh, I, ju I just want to say, so, uh, on this unit vacancy report, so the, we really then, according to what you just said, only have two vacancies at Golden Court that they'll be filled soon. Because the other two, have been removed from the list of vacancies because they're out of your control. Is that what I'm understanding? Actually, all, all six of them are because they all, all six had vacant unit initiative funding tied to Okay. It's just um, that two of the ones at Golden Court are almost ready to lease out, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So we will only have four units as of a few weeks. And we will really be, uh, according to the formula, at 100% occupancy because the other four are capital projects that shouldn't count against us. Is that right? Yes, right, in theory. Um, and, and then I, we have just another comment I should have added too is the two major projects at Golden Court and Berkeley do have designers that are working on the plans now. So we are definitely in stages with those. So that's a little as well. That's wonderful. Okay. Rich, do you have any questions? No, I have nothing. Okay. I'll ask again. Anyone? Sue? No, I didn't. All right. Uh, that is not a votable agenda item. Is there anything else you want to say, Pamela, about your vacancies? No. Okay. No, thank you. So now we're to tenants. Uh, accounts receivable, Pamela? Okay, so we are making um, some strides on this. We, uh, you'll notice, so the, the top part of the uh, tenants account receivable or TAR uh, balance report, the top part is uh, over to the TAR that is not in the payment agreement, and the bottom um, grid is what is in the payment agreement. And we were able Uh, so again, with, with TAR, 
and it keeps people out of housing court. Um, I'm a little aware still. I mean, if, we can, if they can just work with us and um, our property manager and our resident service coordinator to try to get into those repayments, they absolutely would stay out of the housing court. Thank you. Um, is there anything more on that, or are we ready for a discussion, Pamela? Uh, no, that's it. Thanks. Sue, do you have any questions? No questions. I have no, so Crystal has no questions. I have no questions, no, Rich. No, no. All right, thank you so much, Pamela. Oh, let's see. Uh, now we're to the capital report, but didn't we kind of get through all of that except to ask? Um, so you think it comes to the work order report? Uh, well, the capital report comes before the work order report on my agenda, so uh, do we have anything more to discuss about capital? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, Pam, do you have those forms for me on? The admin fees? Yeah, I passed those all out. Yeah, we got them. We got them. So those, those, those do need a board vote. <coughs> what I have to hear is, is that was one of those, uh, these are from projects that had happened previously that were not, we were not able to upload into Cap Hub and get through that trial and error of like what, was, what was going on in Cap Hub. Um, it was because the funding had not talked into there. Yes. I I vote yes. 
vote yes. Okay. So we have a vote three to one abstention. Okay, the next uh, is uh, LA, uh, Hadley Housing Third Capital Project Administrative Expenses number 117091, admin for 624-2024. Uh, for $915.24. Can I get a second? Uh, call for discussion. Sue? No discussion. I have no discussion. Rich? Anything further? No? Okay, call for the vote. Sue? Stay. Can I? All right. Go ahead. Pamela? Can I just... Did you see that the, the invoice was 624.24? Because that's what the other one was as well. And that's what this one is too. I think it has to do. It just has some different. It's, it's just number. the. Is it? It's a different oh, invoice the number, but date. they were generated on the same day, so it has the date of generation of the invoice. All right. So I call. I, yeah. Go ahead. And I, if I could just give Sue one more clarifying piece of All information right. too. Um, the, again, the admin fees are part of a project budget, and they're set at 10%. There's a formula that the executive office allows, and if the project gets bigger, like with the window project where there were change orders, there is no additional 10% fee. It just stays it stays at the original estimate of the, of the project, and it's set at 10% of the project. That's it. So we have an extension from Sue. Pardon? I agree. Okay, so we have a yes from Crystal. I vote yes. Rich? Yes. Okay, so that it's three with one extension. So those are approved. Motion carried. Thank you. Anything more on the capital report, Pamela? No. Okay, are we ready for the work order report? Do you want to give the work order report? Yeah. So it's, um, I think you all have a copy of it. Yep. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. It's, it's, um, uh, it's just that you'll see that if they are broken with us in the category, um, emergencies are uh, items that need to be addressed within a 24 to 48 hour period. An on call emergency is after a Does 
Anyone else have any correspondence? No? Sir? No? Okay, we're down to commissioner's discussion. So the first thing is to talk about the state appointee seat status. Uh, let's see, I think I got an email from uh, David Moskin saying he could not come or wouldn't be at the June 4th meeting. Uh, but I really haven't heard from him since about whether or not he's decided to either resign or reapply for the state appointee seat. His term ended on April the 12th. However, state appointees are kept as holdovers. I mean, it's a little different than, than the rest of us, but state appointees are kept as holdovers until they decide to either resign or reapply. So our situation is that David Moskin has missed five board meetings. And the third option, which uh, is that uh, we would then, the third option available to us is to submit a form saying that David has ceased to serve. Um, I would like for us as a board to decide if that's what we want to do. Does anybody have a relationship with David that they think that they could get him to respond or, or you know, you know, find out what's going on? I don't want to just cease to serve someone uh, without knowing, but he is not responding to me. So does any... I, I, Pamela, has he responded to your um, request for guidance about this issue? Uh, no, I reached out a little while ago about that. Um, I, do, I, I, I don't want to appear to be uh, hounding Mr. Moshkin either right. based on his medical issues that we're all aware of, so I, I don't, um, I guess I don't want to push it too much. I know, same as me. I just wait for him. I've called, I've emailed, I'm not getting a response, and I don't know why, but I'm like you. I don't want to hound him about anything. So the other thing is, too, is we could just give it just a, a little bit more time. We have four members now. Yeah. Um, you only need three, four, four. So we're not in a you know, perilous situation yet. Maybe give it another month. All right. Um, and then see if he, you know, see if he's able to. Um, wants to respond and if not maybe then look at it then. That sounds good. Uh, Sue, do you have any discussion? Do you know anything? Because I know you do talk to him sometimes. No, I haven't heard anything. You haven't heard anything, Crystal? Um, I agree with what Pamela just said. We just give it another month and, and see if we can get a response from David or maybe somebody in his family or something. I would agree with that. Yeah. You're rich? No. Okay. So let's table this until the next meeting, and we will revisit. Thank you so much, Pamela. Okay, so the next is the, uh, well, I got, I got to ask about something before we talk about meeting dates. So we're going to take out of order the date of the annual plan refresh our memory and this it should the board attend the meeting of the annual plan the public meeting um, no you, you don't have to but what, what we've been advised this year is that you can couple them together uh, okay. the annual plan before a board meeting um, but if I, I had thought that we had moved the july meeting to the 30th because there was a conflict for one of the commissioners yeah. If that's the, the case that we could, if it's available, we could do it on the same day as the annual plan. So when is the annual plan scheduled right now? Because it had to be scheduled way in advance. So 45 days ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's July 23rd at 11 a.m. Okay. Um, Which is a Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, yeah. So, and when, go ahead. Just and when I had when I had picked the April plan, I tried to pick them on our normal. We're usually the third Tuesday. We're the last 
Tuesday. The last Tuesday. Of the month. We're the last Tuesday of the month. Okay. The last, there's my confusion. Okay, so uh, I'm going to suggest that because we have folks on the board, including yours truly, for whom two and three hour meetings are not okay. So I'm going to suggest that we. Uh, we keep our board meeting to, to July 30th, and we're trying to get out within an hour, okay? okay? And then those commissioners that want to come to the annual plan public meeting, where that annual plan is pre presented, can then come on Tuesday, July 23rd at 11 a.m., and it'll be right here at Golden Court, correct? In the community room. Okay, does that sound like good with everybody? Okay, so everyone seems to like that. So the, the next thing would then would be to schedule the August uh, meeting. Uh, the last Tuesday of the month is August 27th. Is that still work for everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. So the next thing that we were moving down to commissioner's discussion is what can you tell us about the common area policy revision draft, Pamela? It's the process of recapping it. Okay. So it just needs to be tied into Wonderful. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I don't forget anything here. Okay. So the next thing would be. Do you want to say briefly about the housing form, Pamela? The housing form bond bill? No, the housing form that we went to on Thursday. I just think it's an interesting thing for the commissioners to hear about. Just a brief synopsis kind of thing. Oh, it, it was Senator Augustus from, uh, excuse me, Secretary Augustus from EOHLT uh, did a forum in Springfield at Housing authorities present, uh, we have the housing authority, um, also Tony Amherst, uh, uh, it, but also Agawam and Springfield Housing Authority. But it really was uh, talking about um, the uh, money that the Commonwealth is really trying to put into housing. Uh, Risa came with me, and Risa I don't know if you saw me taking a bunch of pictures of yes. the slides ago, that I was fascinated by. Um, the pools of money, the different avenues for money that uh, the private developers or the nonprofits, uh, even some of the housing authorities, Olio, have really used to try to redevelop properties or to make new public housing uh, or affordable housing. Uh, uh, the way I took that, I got with uh, that it's it's typically a 10-year process, which is uh, it should be clear that it's taking that long. Um, I do have a meeting with the executive office on July 14th to talk about redeveloping some of our properties and see where we can go. Um, so I will, I'll have more of an update on what, what we can do with Hadley. Um, what we have, the Amherst Housing Authority, as I advised at a previous board meeting, is um, attempting to partner with Valley CDC for the Happy Hotel uh, with some of our federal vouchers. Um, that's got a lot of uh, loopholes too. You would think it would be an easy thing. They approached us and asked if we'd be willing to project base some of our vouchers. We said, of course, it's a good project. Um, and then we find out there's a, there's a lot of work to it. We have to do uh, an RFP or a request for which gives an opportunity to other developers to ask for those same vouchers. Um, we now have to do a survey and a study on um, because that, that Hadley Hotel is going to be single occupancy. So then are we discriminating against families by taking some of our vouchers and, and putting them that way? So there's a lot of there's a lot of 
question. Was this open to all board members? Because I would have loved to know about it. That, or was it just that you were only allowed to bring one board member with you? No, we could have. And I do apologize, but the um, reason we'll tell you, it was a very last minute thing. I, I, um, it, it, um, I, I, I'm hesitant to say because this is a taped meeting, but it seemed like it was rushed to be put together. The only notice I got was, was a um, final like here, here's your final opportunity to come. Um, and reason that you weren't even on the list, you know, right. they, they were supposed to be pretty good security because Secretary Augustus was there. Um, but it, I mean, I had just little notice. But next time, I definitely will make sure that it goes to all of the boards. Thank you, members. Yeah, thank you. So, like, we were looking for our name tags. We didn't even end up being registered. See what I'm saying? It was just that last minute. And there weren't, a, there weren't a lot of people there, which was very disappointing. Yeah. I mean, for the secretary to come out and, and speak, and then it was also um, all the mayor, the area main mayors, uh, down in Sarno, um, uh, uh, Westfield, Agawam, uh, I believe Holyoke. Uh, so there were five mayors that came. One, there were supposed to be six mayors, but one couldn't come. So uh, West Springfield, yeah, yeah, it was just very last minute put together. Yeah, and there were, I mean, if there were 30 people, and it, that was a lot. It was, it was a little, but hope they, they do plan on doing it again. And what was the actual so, title of the meeting? What, what was it called? Uh, it was the Western Massachusetts Mayoral, Mayoral Forum, which seems to be a new thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and they were conducting a housing forum. And the takeaway was, if I could just inter interject a few things that I learned during this meeting, and it was mostly informational. The takeaway was that Massachusetts has the lowest vacancy rate in the nation, 1.7%. Nationwide is 6.6%. That's all the other states in the in, in the country, you know, is 6.6%. Massachusetts 1.7 percent so then you logically think through what does that do to renters in Massachusetts they can't find units the units are too expensive they're you know and what does that do as usual right Pamela it affects the marginalized to the most it, it affects the poor and the marginalized the most but it's also affecting middle income people and uh, I think the whole th I think all the mayors said it's there, except maybe uh, one <laughs> said that the number one problem in their towns was were housing, and the state, the governor, and the secretary of housing consider it the number one crisis in Massachusetts is the lack of housing. Is that did I get that right? You did. You did. And they were talking about some of the things coming down the pike. Um, with hopeful legislative changes, one of them being um, granny cottages, which at first um, it made them mandatory in all in all cities and towns, regardless of what the local zoning would say. So they're trying to work around that. At first, that would sound uh, that sounds good. So someone I have I've always had a multi generational household. Um, and in one of the towns I lived in, a lot of us to have a big law and the other one didn't. Um, so you think, oh, that's going to be a really good thing. But then, what really what they're talking, it's not a great cottage. What they're talking about is allowing every single homeowner the opportunity to build up to 900 square foot of an apartment on their home um, so that they can get revenue to stay in their so it was kind of a flip on that, and then and then that's that brought up a lot of debate between the mayors themselves um, and also the, the folks in the audience. I mean, there's a there's a good number of us again that are you know work our housing authority folks and you know spend spend a day in housing court. You know that's not where you want grandma to be ending up with her home. But you know it's just, right. So um, so bad. So specific to housing authorities, just specific to housing authorities, there wasn't much said, was there, Pamela, 
except for there were two projects in one mayor's presentation that were partnerships with their city's housing authority to create certain kinds of things, be they federal or partially state-aided. Uh, so, so there wasn't a whole great deal of time spent on housing authorities. And the mayors themselves, uh, there, there was one executive director who got up and spoke quite passionately, don't leave us out, call us, talk to us. We're ready to work with cities and towns on creating more uh, housing. Don't leave us out. For, you know, of the discussion. Is that, was that your experience? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Polio Council Authority, uh, Matt Mayville is the executive director there, and he has, he and his staff have done a wonderful job of uh, developing things and um, new, new buildings. Um, they, they, Polio Housing is the main federal housing group, um, and his mayor is uh, the mayor of Polio seemed very supportive. Um, the mayors just didn't have a lot going on. Um, With housing authorities, they're, they're not partnering yet, correct? Well, the, but the, but, and there's a difference. So again, this, this valid CDC project over at the, um, the hotel, you know, they're a private nonprofit. They're not, they don't have to uh, adhere to um, Wage. Right. Whereas if the housing authority was doing that, we would, but yeah. we're mandated by law to follow that. So that makes our project more expensive. Right. So that's part. So that and then that people are trying to work on that issue as well. Right. And then and there's actually part of that housing bond bill is some kind of bridging thing, so that you know between different moving parts of getting a development going that there's some bridge money to help soften that blow. So that's going to be an important thing. Okay, we do need to move on. So unless you have something else you wanted to say? Okay. Okay, so there's really no discussion about that, but I am interested if anybody else has any more questions. No? Okay. Um, so, let's see, I want to make sure I get up, getting everything here. All right. So we have uh, items for future agenda. I have listed, you can see what I have listed. Uh, these are items for future in agenda. We don't need to discuss these. I just am interested in, uh, you know, I've had a rough time getting anybody to tell me after the fact. So I've started putting this under commissioner's discussion. Uh, I'm gonna ask everyone now if they have an item they want for future agenda. Well, I'd like the future agenda to know more about these administrative fees that happened with the window and now this new handout. You know, I'd like to see something written by EOHLC or something explaining these fees in more detail other than the fact that they're, you know, that this is what's happening. Did you have anything else besides that? No, well, I would but, like that to be, and I would like to oh, be and another one. Okay. And I would like to understand more about when our, we share vehicles among the housing authorities, Amherst and Hadley, when there is a repair, when do we do a split versus Hadley pays for the whole thing or Amherst pays for the whole thing? Because if there is- Okay, okay, we don't need to discuss it, just tell me what you want so to So I would like to know more about vehicle repair to discuss it in detail. Okay. Why sometimes do we split and other times the housing authority pays for the whole thing? Do you have any more for future agenda? Um, Crystal? No, I have nothing. You have nothing? Okay. So I have six items listed now, including uh, the uh, one that you had mentioned last time, which is the statute of limitations for write-offs. So I'm going to uh, ask you, Pamela, uh, that was something that you had said you would give to her, but these are not, some of these are not really agenda items. They're really training issues. They're, they're, um, there are things that 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 should be understood, but they're they're by commissioners. But they have to do with needing additional training to understand. So, 
so Pamela, instead of taking up the time for some of these issues during a board meeting, can we have a training session where we're not talking agenda items, we're just being told what the rules, laws, and the regs are as, as being trained? So, on a training session on modernization projects? Uh, well, there are specific questions, but we do seem to spend an inordinate amount of time during board meetings doing simple training information stuff. Well, there's, so the, the question is asked and then it's answered, and then it's not, I mean, I, 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 with specifically with the administrative fees, it's a budget line item in a modernization project, and I, I so it, at 10% of the project. Right. So, and the, there's a public housing notice on it. Yes, that's what I'm going to say. It says that you're supposed to be, you, that you're going for it, they have to be approved. Exactly. So I'm not sure what the... That's my point, Pamela. This question but, has but, been but, asked but, and answered for four right meetings in a row. That's the question. You've answered this four times. But I wouldn't well, ask you... For to take time away from running the housing authority to do a Right. Not the best use of mine or my staff. Okay, so I'm going to cut to the chase, Sue. Every single one of these questions you have are in uh, public housing notices and or they, they're just normal stuff. If you have these questions, but um, I know well. Have you taken the training yet? It's been oh, a good way for her to start the new training. Yeah. Yes, so I did have something for commissioner discussions about the training. Okay, go ahead. So um, I was looking, it's, it is, it's called Track Star is the new training. So uh, Commissioner Oppenheimer had, um, had asked me to forward her the invitation again. Okay. Um, and when I went in, I noted, uh, so uh, all three authorities commissioners are under my log. And so this is a new way that EOHLC is but I noted that none of the commissioners from uh, all three housing authorities had taken the training. And that to me is wrong, because I know some of you have. Yeah. Commissioner Oppenheimer had said that she had taken the training under the new mass training, remember? Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I have written to Catherine Swan and Joyce Taylor at EOHLC, um, and they were like, yeah, you're right. And, and so they're looking into whether these are actually due or if it's just a glitch with the system. Okay, thank you. But there, uh, I did send, uh, I can send out the slides again that show, you know, what they are. Um, I can send out the public housing notices. Um, but it, I mean, the public housing notices need to be read. I, you know, I can't, um, sometimes it's to go, go back that, you know, can you put it in your own words? I'm giving you my own words now of what, what the bill is, or you know, the explanation of the fee, um, and it's not sufficient. Exactly. Well, the public housing notice that deals with the administrative fees, can you provide us a copy of that when you come to the next meeting? I, I'm going to, uh, I'm sure you can, but I'm going to say the public housing notices are online, readily available with a search function. Sure, but this so, particular one, if you have a copy of, I would like to know what was the date at least to be able to make it easier for the search when this public housing understood. notice was dated. Understood. I have a question, Pamela. What type of training is this track start? So it's, um, and I'm sorry, I can't see. I, I, is that Ms. Jackson? Yes. 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 Okay, okay, so I had sent you over copies of slides yes. in an email. Oh. That it's exactly that. It's oh. just that you're going through different modules and then there's some like a quick four or five question quiz at the end of each section okay. and then it's tracked that you are you have taken the training and then you that's the certification um, through the EO, through EOHLC. Another avenue for through training is through Mass Naro. Um, which Commissioner um, Smith Breed is taking, so she becomes a, a further certified board member too. And those are um, available. One of the very good ones for commissioners is uh, the, the 
module on finances and also on procurement. Um, those are really good modules that you can take by yourself, but uh, individually of the from the Life Parks series. So we got to get through Mass Dare. So Pamela, is this called Track Star Board Training? What's what's the actual title of the training itself through Track Star? Uh, well, it's the certified board training. Certified board training. Yeah. Now, once we take this training, do we receive a certification? Yes. yes. We do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You get it's a certificate. two years. Yeah. So you get a certificate of completion. Uh, Pamela will have a copy of it in your board file. And and so you keep a copy, Pamela gets a copy, and so that's tracked whether or not you've taken the training. And then in two years from the date that you were appointed, it becomes due again. And that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for it for you to get your invite to so take the okay. board training. And this this training is 100% through Mass Narrow, nothing to do with UMass at all anymore. We're totally done with UMass. Is yeah. that no, it's um, so uh, Mass Narrow does a, a sort of like your training, um, which is very similar to the executive director training. And then Craft Star is the executive office of housing. So Track Star is through EOHL. See. Right, and that one is mandatory, um, and um, you know they can't force you to take it, but they say it's mandatory. And if the commissioner doesn't take it, um, it can it can be an audit finding for the housing. So will I be uh, given an invitation? Are you going to be sending me the invitation when everything comes forth? So I did send them out again yesterday. Uh, but it, it, they had shown that they had been there three other times. But they, uh, from what I'm hearing from you, Sue, is they hadn't received it before. No. Yeah. We, mentioned, we mentioned in the last month's meeting that it uh, hadn't received it. Yeah. So, we, it's, it is, so the executive office is aware that there is an issue. Um, and then so I, once I get any, any answer, I will send out an email to everyone. And Sue, I'll, I'll text you because I know you that um, with the update of where that training is. Okay. All right. Uh, there's no members of the public. I, there's a, yeah, there's no members of the public here. So uh, can I get, do you have anything else, Pamela? I don't, thank you. Okay. Uh, then I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Crystal Jackson moves to adjourn. Rich seconds, take, and we don't have to take a vote, so there, right? Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Well, nice meeting you.